Hey guys, <laughs> welcome to another episode of Tea Talk with Ali. And today I have with me my girl Amaya. Amaya, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Amaya Childers. Yes, and she goes to my school yes. and she is a nursing major. And Spanish minor. Period. But on real talk, <laughs> how is nursing going? Um, it's going. It's going <laughs> for sure. Um, it's a little hard, it's difficult. I'm only in my second year, so it's a little bit Challenge, more challenging than my first year, but I'm I'm getting through. I'm getting through. So, what's your hardest class right now? Patho, pathophysiology is a beast. I don't know and what I'm, that is. It's um, basically like they break down diseases and like how they begin, what it looks like in the body, how to diagnose and treat it. So you have to know your stuff. But I'm also taking chemistry and micro right now at the same time. So it's God bless you. Yes. Yeah, because yes. you know I'm a media major, so. Her schedule compared to my schedule is like relaxed and flexible. <laughs> but let's get down to business. So, yes. if y'all didn't know, Amaya is mixed. She's mixed with black and white. Look at her beautiful hair. Oh, stop it. Which she flattens. Yes. So, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. She has a beautiful curl pattern. I, I don't even know what your curl pattern is. Uh, me neither, girl. You know me. <laughs> I get in the shower and wet it and go on about my day. So, I want to know, so we live here in South Carolina in the South, as you can hear in a Maya little country accent. She got a deep Southern accent, for yes, real. Yes. Wait, where are you from in South Carolina? I'm from Blacksburg, South Carolina, which is small and nobody's probably ever heard of it, so I always say Gaffney. Gaffney, yes, near Gaffney. Yes. Because I never heard of it either. So. <laughs> hey. But what was it like growing up in a black and white home? Um, I would say... Within my family, it was never a problem. Um, I have a lot of mixed cousins. Um, but when you go out, especially being from a small southern town, if nobody knows you, outside of my hometown, we go shopping, everybody kind of looks at you like like you're not supposed to be there type of thing. Like, my grandma is white, so if I go out with my grandma or my aunt or my mom, everybody's like, who is that, who is that child? And um, I would say it's not as bad now that I've gotten older, you know, I'm 20 years old now, and times are way different than before. Um, so I wouldn't say it was hard for me growing up, but it was different for sure. Different. So would you say you were more welcoming in your black, um, the black household or the white household? Um, well, I'm not really very close with my dad's side of the family, but um, my mom's also mixed. So my grandpa's family is obviously black. Um, and they accepted me with open arms. It was never a thing. It was never a, oh, she's mixed, or I feel more accepted by my white side or my black side. I've always felt, which is thankfully so, because everybody doesn't have that, you know. You have siblings, right? I do. My brother is black, white, and Asian. Oh, that's a pretty mixture. Her <laughs> yes. brother is so cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Don't play, because I'm going to show everybody my brother on the camera. <laughs> I'm crying. So with being mixed, um, what would you identify as your culture identity? Um, I always say, you know, African American because that's what I that's what I tie closest to. Um, especially with my mom being mixed and my dad being black, I feel more drawn, obviously, to my African American side with my culture and whatnot. So you know how um, during Black History Month it's like, oh, Black History Month, we don't celebrate like full black, like yes. black, fully yes. 100% African American. And you know, they say if you're mixed, they'd be like, oh, you can only celebrate like half, half the of the month because you're 50%. What's your um, opinion on that? Um, let me say this professionally. <laughs> I think that that is ridiculous, but especially because of the time of the time that we're in you're not going to have a whole lot of people that are one race or another race there's lots of people that are mixed with not just black and white they're mixed with all different types of ethnicities so i celebrate the whole 28 days of black history month and nobody will tell me otherwise period we love that okay so what would be your favorite like kosher tradition like um your favorite part of being black and white like i know different aspects yes um I would think that the way that I was raised, um, white, the white culture and the black culture are definitely different, but I had the best of both worlds. So I saw, you know, the structure in a black household and the food in a black household and the community and how we do reunions and we do cookouts and we do all those type of things. But then you also have your white side that, you know, it's, 
it's the same thing, but in a different way. You know, all ethnicities and cultures do things differently. But um, I loved having best of both worlds, and I love a good cookout. I love to dance, and you know, you yeah. know. So and that's at the black cookout. Oh, it? that's at the oh black yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. But my nana was in there. My nana was at the you cookout. Did, you know, yeah, you know, some white folks can get down. Yeah, with it. she was invited. She was there. She mm-hmm. was the host, co-host of the cookout. Period. So. Okay, so like, yes. what's your favorite dish? I have to know because you know, I personally don't like pumpkin pie. And I like sweet potato. So, you know, they'd be like, oh, you black if you like sweet potato. But, you know, uh, the pumpkin pie is on the <laughs> white side. So, which oh, one? Oh, man, I'm in trouble here. <laughs> because I like them both. But I'm not going to lie. I'm a pumpkin girl. I love pumpkin pie. Oh, when the fall when the fall come, you one of them pumpkin spice girls? Yes. <laughs> yes. I got a pumpkin something every day from Starbucks because that's just my favorite thing. But I also like sweet potatoes. But one thing about my grandma, I'll say, um, she cooks both, like she both makes it equal. the type of food that you would imagine in a black household and a white household. Like, you know, obviously her having a black significant other for all of those years, she has a mixed child. So you get the different parts and you just kind of incorporate that into your life. So I feel like I have a good mixture, but if I had to pick between sweet potatoes and pumpkin, <laughs> You know, I already know. I already know. Yes, I already know. I'm still sticking with my sweet potato. But hey, hey. If, if you haven't been to cookout, um, try the pumpkin pie milkshake. It, it's actually pumpkin pretty good. Pumpkin pie milkshake. Yeah, pumpkin pie milkshake. Oh man. Yeah. All right. When we finish this, I'm gonna go cook out. <laughs> yes. So all Joe said aside. So you know, my girl, she went to Cuba with me this summer, right? Yes. And she got her espanol on. Yes, she did. Good. Don't let that accent fool you. That girl was communicating really good with the Cubans. Yes, it's extra work, I feel like, almost, because my accent is so strong. Yeah. It's hard to knock that off to speak a different language. But I'm working on it. We're working on it. And you know what's crazy, though? Because you know how when we went to Cuba, it was actually, like, more dark Cubans than light Cubans. Yes. And the aspect that we get here in the USA is like, no, there's no black people in Cuba, right. and there really are. And then when you went, they was like, oh, yeah, she's one of us. Yes, yes. And it was very shocking to me that they that they said that about me. But um, I will say, you know, the Cubans, especially with it, there's Afro-Cuban. Mm-hmm. They have a way greater importance, I feel like, on the history of all people, not just one set of people. Like, for example, with our Black History Month, mm-hmm. you know, we talk about Rosa Parks and Dr. Martin Luther King, the basics, which mm-hmm. is obviously still good to know. That's still a part of our culture and our history. But when we went to Cuba, I felt like the black community, they were on the same level. Like, they're appreciated. You can see it even in the, the um, what were the things called? Like, the the people. You know, when we would go. Yeah, the and community. Like oh yeah, they had um they celebrated African Day because they have yes. a lot of Africans um that come over from Africa as transfer students to study medicine and they are really smart and they speak French, Spanish, you name it. And I'm just like just whoa, yeah. mind blown. Yeah. But yeah, the school that we went to in Pinar, they actually celebrated the African culture, African Day. Yes. And the Africans came and had a modeling show. Mm-hmm. They sung their songs and gave the history of Africa. It was an it was, entire day, yeah. not just a 45 minute. Mm-mm. little program like yeah. we're really appreciating we're learning we're doing the whole nine yards which mm-hmm. I feel like is something the U.S. lacks like mm-hmm. we talk about black history but do we really they we talk about what they it. want us yeah. to know we mainly talk about like the European history and everything yes yes which y'all Cuba know more about the United States history than we know about our own yes. U.S. history. Cause. And it's a little bit embarrassing mm-hmm. when we go over and they're like, so what do you know about Cuba? And we're right. looking at each other like, the and they hip- can tell us mm-hmm. about our constitution. We don't we don't even know our own constitution. Mm-hmm. And they can tell us about our constitution and our founding fathers and all of these different things. And we're like, okay, we have a dent in our education system. We for do. For sure. For mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, we're not... That's a whole nother day. That's a whole nother day. It's yes. a whole nother day. But the girls there as well, so since, you know, like, they're mixed with, like, African and everything, their hair texture is just as curly as a Maya's natural texture. However, being that they don't have access to the proper hair products that we do, 
they flatten their hair constantly and it actually doesn't kill the texture of their hair. Yes, and I was very shocked to see that. We only saw what, maybe two? Two curly with, like with curly natural, yeah. natural curly hair because for one, it's the social norm. Most of the girls have pin straight hair anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's a part of fitting in, but also like she said, they don't have access to the proper products. We think that it's hard to take care of our hair here. It's mm -hmm. twice as hard, maybe even three times as hard over in Cuba, which is really sad because I feel like that's a big part of your ethnicity about yourself that you can just display. I take a lot of pride into my hair. So I, I hate that they You know, care. our hair is our crown, girl. Yes, like we are nothing is, without our hair. Is. I wish I would have worn my hair curly today. It would have been more fitting. But you oh already know once you straighten it, you got to get your whole straighten out of it before you wash it again. I need it to be straight for at least... Speaking I don't even want to that, say. <laughs> so speaking of that, so like, yes, growing mixed and like, and you was raised by your grandmother, right? Yes. And you know, some white folks don't know anything about us black girls' hair. So how did that go like? Yes, so my mom, her hair is not, my hair is very, I have a lot of shrinkage. It's very curly, kinky. Um, my mom's is like the perfect ideal curly hair. It just falls flat. You don't have to do nothing to it. Like it's just curly and pretty. So growing up, my mom took care of my hair. But I grew up in a predominantly white town. So when I would get around my friends, you know, I'm growing up in school, everybody else has straight hair. I wanted straight hair. And my mom obviously was like, Maya, you need to embrace your curls. No, I wasn't having that. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't until about seventh grade that I was like, you know what? I'm gonna wear my hair curly to school today. And I didn't, I weren't, sorry. I wasn't okay. able to be taught how to really take care of my hair because by that time, my mom was incarcerated. So I was with my Nana and she tried her best. She put like a just for me perm in my head. Oh no. Yes, yeah, so we had to really start over <laughs> on that. Um, but I feel like it was a big thing for me. And I would just say for all younger girls that have um, a different type of hair, embrace your hair. You don't have to straighten your hair to fit in. You don't have to straighten your hair to feel pretty. Just like she said, our hair is our crown. We have something that a lot of people do not have. So embrace it. Period. Yes. You know, do you have an idol, like, inspiration that you look up to for just, like, fashion or, like, hair or just, like, like being mixed like you in general? Yeah, um... I wouldn't really say so. Um, I obviously, I'm just like everybody else. So I see things on TikTok. I love Pinterest. Um, but I kind of have a, a different style. So I like to wear like darker clothes and that type of thing. Even though I have on hot pink today, it's like hot pink or black with me. <laughs> um, so I just kind of go off my own style. And it's definitely hard. Like I said, I wasn't really taught a lot about my hair like I don't know my texture like you know how there's like 3C 4C mm. 4 I don't, I don't really know, know. like we just we just do it we just make it work so but I would be open like I, if I could find a, an influencer that had like curly hair like me if I could follow her routine and get my hair the way I wanted her hair then I'd be okay with it but I'm kind of just like a be who you are type of person so so that being said like say if you continue the generation of like having mixed children right. what would you tell your future children like if they saw themselves in a situation like you did when you were younger where they felt being judged or like you know mm -hmm. different from everyone else um well i would just teach them like the importance of being yourself um but if it was a continual mom please let me straighten my hair mom please let me straighten my hair i would let them um just because it's a part of self-expression, and even if I want them to be proud of their hair, if they want their hair a certain way, who am I to tell them, no, you can't do that? But I feel like that comes with age, because like you said, it can ruin your curl pattern, putting too much heat on your hair, which is why I only do it every so often. Um, so like at four or five, we're not, we're not doing that. But you get old enough to where you're like, mama, I want my hair straight. Then I'm be like, okay, even if I don't want you to. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Hopefully one day she'll come around and realize she has a blessing and it's unique to me. So period. Yeah. So my last question for you, so if you could change your race if you wanted to, what race would you change it to? <laughs> oh. That's hard. That's <laughs> hard because I don't really know if I would because I love who I am. I love my culture. I feel like we're very 
undermined, especially here in the U.S. Um, people stereotype the black community really bad and into negative lights. And I just think that your race doesn't matter. So, but if I had to pick like a ethnic, you gonna have to edit this part. But if I had to pick a, like an ethnicity, is Cuban an ethnicity or a race? Yeah, that's a good. That's one. really bad. <laughs> no, no, cause no, cause it's crazy too. Cause like that's the thing. Cause like even Mexican is like, what's their race or ethnicity? But I think like, Mexican is like the ethnicity or race. But even then, when they ask for their race, like you go to the hospital, it's like, oh, my race is white. Like they don't have a box for. So yeah, it's like Hispanic. Like, yes, yeah, that be ethnicity. 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 Yeah. So, so then with Cubans, Cubans, cause since they're mixed with Africans. African and like Spaniards. Obviously, know. we didn't learn too much. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we did. We did. That's our. That's blame our health. I mean, our healthcare system. Not, not nursing. <laughs> blame our education mm -hmm. system for this conversation because yes. we don't know. But I really had the best time in Cuba. I had like a big culture shock. I didn't want to come home. I cried on the way home. She did. Cried she on the plane. She was, she was heartbroken. I'm still heartbroken. I miss all my friends and. Mm -hmm. My good friends, yeah. I miss all of them. They're so, but yes, I, I really, I was like, I could live here, I could be a part of this, and it really made me like want to bring their parts of their culture back here. Oh, for sure, we definitely would need that type of culture. That's maybe Especially what we need to talk dancing. about one day. Maybe we need to talk about our Cuba trip. Heck yeah, that'd be really good. Have everybody, Kiara and Chantal. Yes, we should. We yeah. should. Do that. We're gonna do that. Okay. So guys, yes. Maybe a tea talk in the future. I don't know which tea talk, but y'all gonna hear about our Cuba experience. Yes, and maybe a little Espanol. Oh, maybe. But thank you, Amaya, for coming on my tea thank talk. Thank you for with having Ali. me. I enjoyed it, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tune in for the next tea talk.